So now that we know who won the Grammys, a lot of people are saying it almost feels like there's a formula to making a pop song. And that is because there is. Sort of. Anthony here for D News, and a video that's been going around for the last couple of weeks by Boy in a Band talks about Max Martin, who over the last 15 years has written and produced most of the hits from artists like Katy Perry, Taylor Swift, Kelly Clarkson, Britney Spears, and the Backstreet Boys. This is a dude who clearly has some sort of secret on lock. Now, music is math, right? So is there some sort of formula for a popular song? Well, a lot of research has gone into that. On his site, Music Machinery, software developer and orchestral trombonist Paul Lemire ran through a bunch of recent hits in his custom pattern visualization software, and he saw something interesting. Check out this visualization of Adele's Rolling in the Deep. So those color patterns are beats, and those little connections inside the circle are sections of music that exactly line up. So you can see where the chorus is by how many connections there are. Now, Check out Lady Gaga's Paparazzi. Now Kesha's TikTok. Taylor Swift's Fearless. Definitely a pattern. And before you wonder about coincidence, here are some songs that aren't radio pop. Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven, Dave Brubeck's Take 5, Dead Mouse's Raise Your Weapon, all different. So there's definitely a trick to catchy, stick in your head, jump up the charts pop. In 2011, artificial intelligence researchers from the University of Bristol threw every top 40 song over the last 50 years into their own software to see if they could come up with an equation for the perfect pop song. They call the result the hit potential equation, and they use different factors like duration, tempo, and harmonic simplicity to try to predict what songs will be hits. For instance, right now, according to their equation, a good pop song should be harmonically simple, a little over three minutes long, dancey, but not like crazy 1980s dancey, and loud. Super loud. Now, some students at Rutgers named Tom Englehart and Sean Ellis did something similar with the American charts and found similar results. As of 2010, a hit song is 114.2 beats per minute, 3 minutes and 59 seconds long, moderately danceable, and in the key of C major. Just add some lyrics about love and or the club, and you've probably got yourself a hit. Now, all of these things are really just trend predictors, right? Just because something is popular now doesn't mean it's always going to be popular, or that you can just write a song that mimics other hits and expect it to blow up. So is there some way we can tell how a pop song affects us, some sort of biological response that can predict it? Some studies from Emory University say it's all in the nucleus accumbens, a part of the reward processing structure of the brain. A few years ago, they played 120 up and coming songs for a group of 12 to 18 year olds, and they recorded their brain activity in an fMRI while they were listening. And then they waited around for a couple of years and tracked how successful the songs became. Every single successful song tripped the nucleus accumbens, which is is part of the mesolimbic system. It releases dopamine, that happy chemical in your brain. Unfortunately, only three of the songs ever became hits, and none of them seem to have similar characteristics, which means that you can follow a formula all that you like, but there are still some deeper, unknown emotional factors that make a great pop song. So, idea, let's kidnap Max Martin and put him in an fMRI while we write pop songs for him. Who is with me? Also, let me know what earworm pop song you can't get out of your head down below, and we'll see if we can't draw any conclusions on our own.